Hey guys, in this video I'm going to go over a couple examples of how to find the domain of a function algebraically and this will line up with the delta math assignment named finding domains of functions algebraically. Alright, here we go. So our first function here, f of x equals square root of 6x plus 18. So we want to find the domain of this. Basically we want to make sure that um, you know, we want to find a space where the domain or this function is represented. And in other words, we also need to find out any problem spots with it. So the problem spot that we have right now is the fact that we have a square root function. And our issue here, at least currently, is whatever we have underneath the square root cannot be less than zero. We don't want that because that will create an imaginary numbers and we just don't have those yet. So the domain of this function is going to be all of the x's that we can plug in such that when we plug them in, it's not going to create a negative under the square root. So how do we figure out what that would be? Well, let's figure out. Well, we need 6x plus 18. We need all x's such that that is greater than 0. We always need whatever's under the square root to be greater than 0. So how do we figure out what this is? Well, let's subtract 18 from both sides. We get 6x then to be greater than negative 18. Divide by 6, divide by 6. We're dividing by a positive, so this is going to stay in this direction. So we need negative, sorry, we need x greater than negative 3. So that's one way to represent the correct answer, but we also need to figure this out in interval notation. So we want all the x's such that they're greater than negative 3. And it's a strictly greater in this case, which actually it doesn't need to be because having a 0 under the square root would be totally fine. Right? Square root of 0 is 0. And that doesn't cause any errors. So this can actually be greater than or equal to and will still be fine. So I want all the numbers greater than or equal to negative 3. Then negative 3 is the smallest number I can have and it goes on the left. And since I can have negative 3, I use a square bracket. So my domain would be all numbers from negative 3 and onward, right? Literally to infinity and beyond. So I can have all numbers such that they are greater than or equal to negative 3. So that's the interval of negative 3 to infinity, okay? Because we can't have a negative under the square root. All right, next. Is. Okay, what about when you have a rational function? What is the issue that can occur with rationals? What is it that we do not want to have in rationals? Well, if you have a denominator that equals zero, that's not good. So we want to plug in all x's into this equation, and we don't care about the numerator at all. It has no influence on domain, so we don't care. We only care that the denominator is not zero. So we can plug in any x that we want unless it makes the denominator zero. So let's see exactly what x that would be. So if we set this thing equal to zero, we can find out at exactly what value, or if you're dealing with a quadratic under here, values, plural, will make your domain zero. In this case, track 16, we get 4x equals to negative 16, divide by 4, divide by 4. So we can have all values except when x is negative 4. Because notice when we plug in negative 4 here, 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. Negative 16 plus 16 is 0. That creates an undefined. So we can have all real values except when x equals negative 4. So all other values are okay, just this very specific value of x equals negative 4, that causes the problem. So interval notation, we can have everything from negative infinity up to negative 4, and then we can have a union with everything from negative 4 to infinity, right? What this does is this basically just blocks out negative 4, right? Because of the curve bracket, this means don't include negative 4. So this would be our domain. Everything except for negative 4. Alright, let's see something a little more complicated now. 
So what if we want to find the domain of this guy? We have a couple of different things going on. So I have a rational function. So I don't want my denominator to be zero because that causes an undefined. But the other thing that I don't want is I also don't want what's underneath my square root to be less than zero. So we need only positive values under here, under the square root. So we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to solve for the zeros and then I'm going to check the intervals around the zeros and then we'll get to see kind of what's okay. So we can't have that denominator equal zero. We also can't have what's in the radical less than zero because that would be bad. So let's solve this out for exactly when it equals zero and we'll go from there. So this is a quadratic, x squared minus 5x minus 24. I want to know exactly when it equals zero and then I'm going to check around there to see kind of what's okay and what's not okay. This guy's factors into x minus 8 and x plus 3. So therefore the zeros of this function happen when x is equal 8 and x is equal negative 3. What you have to do with this always is we need to check the middle. So I need to check in between these two numbers. And I'm just going to pick a number. So I want a number between negative 3 and 8 that's really easy to plug in. Hey, how about 0? That's always my favorite thing to plug in minus 5 times 0, minus 24. Now, we just want to evaluate this and see what this is. Okay, 0, minus 0, minus 24. So at 0, this thing underneath the radical would evaluate to negative 24. And then we'd be picking the square root of negative 24, and that's bad. So this does not check out. This is bad. Middle is bad, and it makes the function sad. <laughs> So no good in the middle. Okay, so the middle of these values don't work. Let's try the outside of these values. So let's try something less than negative 3 and something greater than 8. So I'm going to label this outside. So outside of negative 3, so something less than negative 3, let's check negative 4. Let's see what happens when we go negative 4 squared minus 5 times negative 4 minus 24. Negative 4 squared inside parentheses is 16. Minus negative 20, so that'd be plus 20. Minus 24, so this is going to end up being 36. Minus 24, this evaluates to positive 12. Positive 12 underneath the square root is fine. That checks out, and it's also fine underneath the rational because the square root of 12 is not 0. So we're good there. So outside less than checks out. And just for consistency, we'll also put a happy face. Now let's check outside above. Okay, so this is, this is outside of less than. We also need to check outside greater than. So outside greater than, we need greater than 8, so how about 9? So we need to check 9 squared minus 5 times 9 minus 24. 81 minus, um, what's that, 45? Minus 24. So what we're really checking is if this is positive. As long as this number is positive, we're good to go. So let's see, 81 minus 45, that'll be 36. Ha, ah, how funny. Minus 24 again. And this will again evaluate to 12. 12 is fine, because positive number, if we take the square root of 12, it will still be a positive number. We'll have a positive number underneath the, the rational. All is good. So what you're checking for here is you're checking for positive numbers. As long as you evaluate to a positive number, we're good. And this was a more than number. Because we checked for greater than 8, and we checked for less than negative 3. So the outsides of our zeros work. The middle or the inside number does not work. 
So therefore, the domain of this function will be from negative infinity to negative 3 outside the zeros unioned with, now I need to go from 8 to infinity. Right, because all the numbers that are cool are the numbers outside the two zeros I found. Now, if the middle number was good, my interval would be a little different in that I would just use the interval between negative 3 and positive 8 and be good there. But because the outside numbers are what checked out, then my interval for my domain is the numbers outside of the zeros that I found. So I hope this helped, and of course, please ask questions as you need to.